What's up guys, welcome to A Resource Life. My name is Chris, thank you so much for joining me. In today's episode, I wanna go over the reason that most people quit their eBay store. So let's get straight into the content. Please make sure you smash the like button and consider subscribing because in every single video, I help you guys build an online store to help give you the freedom to do whatever else you wanna do in life. So let's get into the content. Okay, in order to actually make a full-time living reselling on eBay, I think there's this huge confusion where you think you can just do a few things here and there and then you can now quit your nine to five. That is not the case. You need to have a large enough inventory to support you to have consistent sales every single day. So if you're like me and you have what I call a garage sale store, which is a little bit of everything, yes, I do focus on shoes, but my store is a little bit of everything. I recommend that you're gonna need at least 2000 items in your store before you have any regular consistent sales. This is very different than people who are selling what's trending, what's hot. You can have a much, much smaller store if you do that and just sell things that are on trend. That's more like the devil's model, which I talk about having a store with 666 items. It's just for fun that I picked that, that name. I'm not actually a devil worshiper. It's just when you have around 600 trendy items, you seem to have around the same traction as 2000 random items. Now, the reason that people don't get there is because they are a bad manager. So this is the same reason why you quit your job. If you're great at your job and you're making decent income, I would say 50 to 100 grand, people are not quitting their job per se, they're quitting their manager. There's a hostile work environment, or you might be in a situation where you did awesome, you crushed it this quarter, you met all the things that they wanted of you, and at your performance review, they're like, congratulations, you did everything we asked of you, um, would you train this new person for us that's cheaper? Um, that way they can do it for less money. Or can you train all these other people to be just like you? Uh, we're not going to pay you any extra, but can you help replicate your success for everyone else in the company? Okay, thanks, bye. That's kind of how they treat you. That's how I was treated at every single job. As soon as I crushed it, I would either get more work piled on my plate that I would get to do without getting paid more, or I had to train other people to do it. So someone in my last video was a little bit but hurt and upset that I have my employees training new employees. That's just how I've been treated growing up and I don't think that that's necessarily unethical. I think that's just sort of business 101. If someone's doing a good job, you try to replicate that across your whole company. That's just a fact of life. So what I recommend is I'm gonna give you guys some tips to help you be a better manager of your own time because when you're getting started in your eBay store, you are the worker. You're the person that goes out and finds the deals. You're the person listing. You're the person photographing. You're the person shipping. So you have to manage your own day. You're basically quitting your eBay business because you, you're quitting your manager side of you who didn't set up a workplace environment that helps you succeed. You need to set this up properly so that you can stay consistent till you get to the point where you have a store big enough where you get consistent sales so that you can quit your nine to five. Okay, tip number one for being a great manager, I learned from my old manager, Ken Yerrick, who actually passed away in 2012. So this really upset me because I didn't grow up with a very strong father figure. So he taught me some life lessons that carried on to every single thing that I did and I'm gonna share them with you. So number one is, you can get exactly what you want by helping other people get what they want. This is from Zig Ziglar, it's a very popular quote about success and it's very very true managers help their staff stay customer focused so here's an example if you put consistently great items into your store that somebody would want to buy online you will be successful i used to work for lexus of fremont where my old boss taught me everything that i knew and i basically figured out that if i helped six people find the car of their dreams every single day online that would equal an income of $140,000, which is my goal. So I would help six people find a car. Of those six people, three people would schedule an appointment. One and a half of those people would buy once they showed up at the dealership. That equals $140,000 a year and about 20 car sales per month, mostly online. I figured out it's very difficult to go out on the sales floor and meet people and try to get that same that same output. I had to do it on the phone. I had to do it via email. I had to learn how to do it online. Reselling is no different. Okay. You can't just go from store to store to store and necessarily scale without taking a step back and thinking about what your customer wants. When you start thinking about what's selling, what's trending, how would customers like things presented, you start to modify how you look for goods. And when you're going out, you're actually a lot more effective, a lot more selective, and you're customer focused. So 
as the manager, you can't let your sales staff or you can't let your employees get caught up in the day-to-day -day garbage. They have to stay focused on helping the customer. That helps people not get burned out. So you are the manager of yourself working in your store. You've got to keep yourself focused on what's important, which is finding quality products for your customers. Okay, tip number two is to maintain 85% effort. So as a manager, it's really important to make sure that your list or self doesn't get burned out. So I recommend operating in sprints. So take two hours, list for two hours, or do customer service for two hours, or ship for two hours. Don't do anything else, and just know at the end of the session, you're gonna be able to take a break. I see a lot of people going balls to the wall. They'll list 50 or 100 items. They'll put on Eye the Tiger and work for five straight hours and then they'll burn out and they'll take five days off of working. Don't do that. You just need to list 15 or more items a day. I recommend you do that over the course of two or three hours and then spend the rest of the day looking for that quality inventory. Tip number three as a manager is just to make sure that your people are making progress daily or just having that positive momentum. I'm gonna give you guys an example. Most people are overweight because they eat about 200 calories too much. That's about five or six bites of extra food. Most people have too much inventory that they haven't listed, not because they bought 100 pallets, not because they bought a whole house worth of inventory, but actually because they bought two or three extra Goodwill bags of stuff that they should have left behind over time that equals an entire house full of inventory that's not listed or in one case a gentleman reached out to me with 6,000 square feet of unlisted inventory tip number four is having everything ready for the next day so this is one of my top tips ever which is make sure that you lay out the inventory that you want to list the next day the day before if it's today already it's already too late you kind of need a plan for the day at the beginning of the day so the day before, set out what you want to list tomorrow. The next day, just knock that out. That's all you need to build the momentum to get to the next level. If you continue that habit of just putting out the next day's work and then the next day you actually do it, you will crush it after you build a little bit of momentum because you're moving in the right direction now. And years of moving in the right direction equals an awesome store with consistent inventory and sales every single day. Number five is going to surprise you guys, and that's actually investing in education. So my old manager at Lexus, the one that died that was awesome, told me that any education that I wanted to buy, any self-development stuff would be paid for by the company. As long as after I was done with it, I would give it to the rest of the staff. This really helped me level up because I could invest basically on the company's dime and improving myself. So that was huge. And this might really surprise people to know that most of the people buying my courses and most of the people buying my consulting are much larger sellers than me. It doesn't surprise me because I know that the people who are at the top of their game invest in themselves more than any other type of person. Roger Federer is the best tennis player in the world. He has a full-time coach. LeBron James has a full-time coach, full-time nutritionist. Wouldn't you think that the best ever people would know what they're doing? All they're looking for is one little tiny tidbit, one little idea that might shift their day to help them get to the next level. That's all they're looking for. Just one little nugget is worth $150. There's coaching that's $10,000 an hour. All they're looking for is one idea to make it worth it. A country club membership might be seventy-five dollars to $150,000 a year. They're not buying it for the golf. They're buying it for the one person they meet in the locker room that gives them one real estate idea that's worth millions. So think about this. Start investing in yourself. Start putting some money and some time into your network. And until next time, guys, make progress daily.